Hi, my name is Todd Schleimbaum. I'm here today to explain uh, to you what NOTAMs are, uh, where do we get them, how do we file them, and respect to launching your guys' weather balloons. Um, quite simply, what NOTAMs are, are Notices to Airmen. It's an acronym. Uh, what they do is they give commercial flight crews warning or notices of non-standard events, whether it be with navigation aids, runways, airports, or in our case, a unmanned balloon. Um, the way we get them in the airline industry is if I were going to fly from point A to point B, that would be entered into a computer system and it would create a corridor. And any NOTAM that is applicable to the flight that is in that corridor is going to show up and it's going to give us uh, the information for it. Um, our NOTAM that we're concerned with today is for a high unmanned balloon or what we call a highball NOTAM. Okay? This would be used to notify flight crews that would be flying in your launch corridor, uh, what kind of balloon it is, what it looks like, what time it's going to launch, um, how we're going to define it uh, is pretty simple. Uh, to file a NOTAM, the first thing we need to do is we're going to have to compile a list of information that we're going to need to be able to define what this thing is, where it's at, where it's going, how high it's going, and of course time. Um, the first thing we're going to need to do is whoever's going to be on the launch site is going to need to have a cell phone with them so there's direct contact information for the FAA or anybody that's got a question uh, on your launch. So the easiest way I know to do that would be just to have your instructors or the teachers that are there to keep a personal cell phone with them. Um, you're going to need to be able to define the launch site location. Now that gets a little strange because it's not just as simple as providing an address or a set of GPS coordinates. That's not how we navigate in the aviation community. So we're gonna talk about that here in just a minute. Uh, the launch time, uh, we don't use a standard clock in aviation. We do everything on what's called Zulu time. Zulu time is Greenwich Mean Time. Um, there's a conversion factor, we'll talk about that in a little bit and how to define that. Uh, we need our estimated time to 60,000 feet. Uh, controlled airspace stops in the United States at 60,000 feet. So the FAA is only concerned with uh, time from the launch site to 60,000 feet and then what time it's going to return. Uh, once you're above 60,000 feet, you're actually outside of controlled airspace and anybody can do anything they want. Uh, no commercial airliners fly above 60,000 feet, uh, so they're just not concerned with it. Uh, the estimated landing time uh, will need the estimated flight trajectory. Now normally in the United States, uh, the winds move from the west to the east uh, so you're going to have an eastbound trajectory. If when you look at your winds for the launch day, if it's more towards the northeast, more towards the southeast, you can define it that way. Uh, but they just need a general direction. There's not a real science behind this. Uh, well, to start off with, the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to talk about how we define where something is when we're filing a note. The way we do that is all navigation in the United States is predicated off of what are VORs. What a VOR is, is a you know, variable omnidirectional range that is a navigation made. It's based, it looks like an upside down bowling pin. Okay, these are strategically placed all over the United States and we navigate from one point to the next point to the next point to the next point. So when we need to file our NOTAM, we're going to need to find the closest to VOR. The easiest way to do that is there are several uh, charts and maps that are available on the internet is the easiest way I know to get to them. Uh, and they look something like this here. Now there is an awful lot of information going on with this. There's an awful lot happening. Uh, but quite frankly, what we're looking for is we need to find a VFR sectional chart. Um, you specifically want to find a VOR sec or VFR sectional chart um, you don't want to mess around with the low altitude in route charts or the high altitude in route charts because we're concerned with a specific place on this map and we got to be able to find it. Well, the high altitude and the low altitude in route charts don't have these pictures of the lakes and the streams and the towns and whatnot. That stuff just doesn't appear. So if you use a VFR sectional chart and they're available all over the place, um, you actually get this overlay with, uh, with the map details. What we're concerned in first finding is obviously where our launch site is. And in our example, we're just gonna use uh, the town of Seymour right here. 
okay? So once we know where we're at, the first thing we're gonna have to find is where's the closest VOR? Well, they stick out fairly well if you know what you're looking for. What we're looking for is this compass rose right here, okay? And you've got this information box that's right here that says VOR DME, it gives you a name and it gives you an identifier, okay? So we're gonna need to find that name and identifier, the closest one of these, to Seymour. It's fairly simply done. So we're gonna go back to our VFR sectional chart. We're gonna pull it up. And in our example today, we found this one right here, which is actually, it's kind of hard to read on the screen, but it's NAV VOR, okay? And this gives us some navigation information, some Morse code stuff for an identifier. But what we're really concerned with is this identifier right here, and I'm just gonna write it up here in a corner so we don't forget. It says A, B, B. Now, all VORs have a three letter identifier, okay? Like there's another one up here that you can see. It's uh, actually Bloomington, it's identifier is BMG. They're all over the place. But just find the closest one to your launch site. Uh, and in our example, it's gonna be this one down here, so we're gonna use that. Once we've found it, okay, what we need to do is figure out our place bearing and distance from this VOR. Now that's a lot of a lot of technical garbo there, but it's pretty simple. So in our example, our place is going to be Seymour. So we'll just use this dot right here. So this dot represents your launch site, whether it be over here, over here, over here, over here, it doesn't matter. You just need to be able to find it on the VFR sectional chart. Once you've located that and you've located your closest VOR, we've got to create what's called a bearing. The easiest way to create a bearing is you find the center of this compass rose, okay? Now, if you get out west or you do this further north or wherever, these compass roses are aligned to magnetic true north, so they're gonna turn on the map, they're gonna look a little weird. In Indiana, fortunately, we're very close to uh, the central line, so they point pretty much straight up due north uh, there's not much variance. So we're gonna find the compass rose, and here's actually the center part of the VOR itself. Um, that's what we need to find. And we just need to create a place of uh, a bearing line. It's pretty simply done, just take a straight edge, it doesn't matter what kind, and draw a line in between the two dots. So there we go, now we've got our bearing line, okay? If you look at where you drew your line and on the compass rows, it's graduated just like a compass. The top is zero degrees, and I'll write some of these on here so they're just a little easier to see. Uh, right out here is 90 degrees. Of course, this due south, 180. This is 270. And this is graduated off. Well, our bearing line here comes pretty close to the 33, which represents 330 degrees, okay? So now we have our place, which is nab, on the 330 degree radial. Now we need a distance. It's always place bearing distance when we define things in air navigation. So the easiest way to find a distance is we're just gonna measure our line. So if we measure our line on a normal scale here, um, the scale of the VFR sectional chart is actually one to 500,000. Uh, so it gets a little weird when we start dealing with uh, distances and inches, but essentially one inch equals 6.86 .6 nautical mile. Now, we can't measure this line on this blown up version because we'll end up with something that's absolutely crazy because this is not the scale because we've blown it up for the projector. But one inch equals 6.86 .6 miles, so it's just simple math. Measure you know, how long your line is uh, when you have a true to scale map and do the math. So now we have a place, we have a bearing, and we have a distance. Now, once we've compiled that, we need to get in touch with the folks that actually handle and do these notums, which is the flight service station. Uh, five or six years ago, they combined all the flight service stations everywhere in the United States. They're all underneath one roof now, and they've all got one number. Um, they used to be scattered all over, but they've kind of consolidated it down. Uh, the number that you need to contact flight service with is 
8787. That's going to connect you to what's called a uh, flight briefer specialist. Um, you're going to simply tell him that you need to file a highball note. Now he's probably going to shuffle around because this is not something they get on this line very often. They're not used to people outside of the aviation community filing these. So once you get up to speed with him, you're going to need to provide him with all the information that we've just compiled off of the map to be able to do this. The first thing we're going to need to do is give them just exactly what we told them. We're going to need to file a highball notum. That's the kind of notam that we're going to file. You're going to give them your contact information, which is the cell phone that you're going to need to have out at the launch site with you. And while this thing is in the air, that, that cell phone needs to be turned on and, and somebody needs to be able to get a hold of you. You're going to give them our place bearing distance. Okay, so in our example, our place is nav VOR bearing 330 degrees at, we'll just call it 42 nautical miles. And once you give them that information, what you need to give them, okay, is a date and time in Zulu for the launch window. So if we're gonna do this on March 5th, we'll just write this up here, March 5th, okay, and let's say we're gonna launch at 10 a.m. local from our launch site. Well, we've got to convert that into Zulu time. The easiest way to do that is just take your take it and put it in military time. So we got 10 hundred hours, and we're just going to add this time of year five hours to it, and we get 1500 Z. That's going to be our time. Now, our date and time of the launch window. So we need to actually give them a launch window because we're not going to say that we're going to do this exactly at 10 a.m. Uh, the folks that put this kit together recommend that you give yourself a uh, window of an hour. So we would be 3, 5, 15 from 1500 to 1600Z for your launch. Okay. You also have to provide them with uh, a time to 60,000 feet. Now, a standard weather balloon that you guys are using, this great big shiny looking thing here, um, give a normal helium and everything else, give yourself 90 minutes. If you just add 90 minutes to it, uh, like I said, this is not an exact science, uh, you'll get pretty close to what you need to do. So, time to 60,000. Okay, we're just gonna add 90 minutes to this here, is 1730Z, okay? Next thing they're gonna be concerned with is time to landing of your payload. So this thing's gotta go all the way up to 100 and some odd thousand feet, and then it's gotta come all the way back down in a parachute. Well, the time that they're concerned with is the time to completion, so it's a time to launch, climb, descend. So time to uh, landing, Uh, the folks that put the kit together say give yourself, you know, a total of three hours and 33 minutes. So we're just going to take three hours and 33 minutes and add it to our 1500 time here. So what is that? 15, 16, 17, 18, 30. Z. So that will give you your three hour and 30 minute from start to finish. Okay, the next thing they're going to want from you is the direction of travel. Uh, like we said, predominant uh, high altitude winds in the United States are from the west to the east, so it's just going to be east, east direction. And then lastly, they want a description of the device. Uh, what this is going to provide us is when they issue this NOTAM uh, and it gets uh, distributed to flight crews uh, all over the world. And lastly, the thing you'll need is a description uh, the balloon itself. Uh, in our kit, what that's going to be is it's going to be a white balloon, uh, 10 feet in diameter, with a orange parachute, and then whatever color your package happens to be, uh, most cases you're going to wrap it up in black or uh, some other color, and then they obviously want the weight, uh, so uh, two and a half pounds of just the payload itself. Uh, so in conclusion, when we file these notams, 
just make your list. Uh, remember, we need contact information, launch site location, launch site time, estimated time to 60,000 feet, estimated landing time, all these times are in Zulu, uh, the estimated flight trajectory, so predominantly west to east or whatever the winds happen to be that day, and then the physical description of your balloon. Give them a call on the telephone number and you should be good to go and enjoy. Thank you.